Okay, this is Tim with Grip and Rip Racing Products. I'm going to show you how to use our new uh, G4 clutch alignment system with a preloader device um, on this 2019 G4 850 Summit. Before I do that, I want to quickly go over the current BRP method to align clutches. And if you've ever done any clutch alignment, you've seen a diagram that looks just like this. Um, you place a bar between the secondary, pinch it in place, and then you have an X measurement here, and a Y measurement here, and a Z measurement, which is the center to center distance. Um, what Skidoo always does is makes this Y spec larger than the X. That builds in a skew in the alignment so that the clutch is sitting more like this. And then under load, they're hoping that it pulls into the correct spot to keep the clutches aligned. Um, the way you do that, is you use their bar or a 3 8 thick straight bar you place it between the clutches then you close this clutch to pinch it in place this is the X measurement up here on the other end of the bar is the Y that you can't really see pretty much got to take this side panel off to be able to get at it um, and then the Z is this distance in here between the shivs a couple of the problems with this is um, they're only measuring in one plane, so you can be off in one of the other planes and the clutches might measure okay, but they're really not in alignment. Uh, and then they don't really build in enough skew so that under load, the clutches are in alignment. And that's what our new preloader clutch alignment system will do. Okay, to install our preloader device, first thing you're going to do is install these little retainers. They go to the side of the roller. There's a nice threaded hole right there. Just bolt one on. You don't have to tighten it real tight. Rotate the clutch to this next one. Put that one on. Just finger tight so that you can still rotate this. Now, put our preloader on. And this is what that looks like. It's got a ring at the bottom, a spring, and then this end goes in your secondary shaft. Rotate it so that this bolt's on the inside. Slide it over the end of the clutch, and then slide it into the shaft. Hold it tight in place and rotate these little retainers down and that will hold the ring on the clutch. Okay, and I've already taken out the clutch bolt. You take the plastic little cover off the side panel here first. Take the clutch bolt out. You need a 13 16 12 point with a, with a uh, extension. Here's our clutch alignment bar. Um, it's half inch thick, machined flat on both sides, has a series of holes in it, and a bolt for the clutch bolt. Hold the bar in place, slide the clutch bolt through, tighten that up. Now you don't have to tighten this with any tools, just hold uh, by hand is fine. So you can rotate it and lock it in place. There, our alignment system is all installed. Okay, I'm just going to go over how this preloader works a little bit. What we did is mounted a camera looking at the P drive center of the clutch bolt, the center of the driven shaft. Uh, the center of the recoil side, mag side of the motor and all the motor mounts and did a lot of testing, took a lot of video and mapped out exactly how the motor was moving and where at different speeds, throttle positions um, and came up with a spot where the motor was at high loads you know 80 percent of the time. Um, then we calibrated this preloader device to pull 
between the clutches like the belt would pull um, and figured out how much load needs to be on this spring to simulate what the clutches were doing. Uh, it works really well, matched the camera data really close um, and that's how that works. The outside of this P-drive clutch has a machined surface and if you put a dial indicator on that surface turn the motor over there's no run out so the end of this plate is square to the engine so that's why we put our alignment bar on that plate and when you rotate it what we're going to do is take a measurement at the top of the clutch the 12 o'clock position the bottom or the 6 o'clock the 3 o'clock or what I call the right side and the 9 o'clock which is the left side so all you do is by hand loosen the clutch bolt and you can rotate this bar, lock it in place in the different spots that take measurements. Um, so we're going to do a zero load just to kind of get a baseline and then we're going to do for this 850 a three quarters of an inch preload on this spring. That's going to simulate where the motor is, where the driven is, under that high load where the belt would be slipping the most and that's where we're going to line the clutches. Okay, I'm going to explain our form a little bit so people understand kind of how that works. Um, so this top section, this is this would be a top view looking down from the top of the sled motor here, drive clutch or primary clutch here, secondary clutch and shaft, and this would be our alignment bar. This is the right measurement you're going to take and the left. Um, same thing with the rear view. That'd be looking at the sled from the back of it, looking at the side of the clutches. Secondary, you know, the motors below it, clutch, our bar, top measurement, and the bottom measurement. So to simplify that a little bit, and I drew in the drive clutch and shaft here, just with a T type uh, diagram, and then slid those instead of being over here I just slid it in line with the driven clutch same with the uh, rear view slid it up um, so that the measurements were more in line with each other and would be easier to see the differences so this is the actual form that you're going to use when you take measurements you fill out the top section with what sled you have this one is stock no changes to the motor mounts and the first test you're going to do is at zero load. This is like a picture of the driven clutch with your right, left, top and bottom measurement points. And these are the views that I showed you earlier. Every box is going to be where you're going to put a measurement. So that's where you would put your left, your right, top and bottom. Then you do a little math. This box is, box is T minus B and this box is R minus L. And this is where you're going to put your center to center measurement and this is the box where you're going to calculate your clutch offset which is T minus B divided by 2 just the average of these two numbers so that's the form the next the next section will be where you put a load on it um, and you do the same calculations and then you'd be able to compare and see what you want to do for shims okay now you're ready to take some measurements and what you're going to need is a six inch caliper like this. It can be something cheap. This is probably a $20 caliper. doesn't have to be fancy. The first measurement I always take is I, I rotate the bar to the T. That would be for top. Put it in line with the top of the clutch and tighten it by hand. Then take your caliper and use the depth measurement on the end. Put it through the T hole and slide that depth until you get to the clutch and you can use this bar here to make sure you're kind of square to the alignment bar get your measurement slide it out read your measurement and write that in for the top location on your form then you'll rotate this bar down to the bottom is lined up at the bottom of the clutch do the same thing slide your caliper through there take your measurement record that in the form then you'll rotate it for the right measurement which would be this hole measure that distance rotate it to the left 
measure that, that distance, and then fill out your form. And that would be your zero load on the clutches baseline. Okay, for your center to center measurements, I made this hexagon shaped piece. Um, it has three measurements on it. One is, is labeled spec. That's going to be what you want the clutches to be at. The next side is minus 50 thousandths. And the next one is minus 0 0.100, so 100 thousandths. So the way you use this is pick the, you know, the biggest one. I, it's right around spec right now. You slide it on top of the P drive and try to slide it between the clutches. So right there, spec is tight on the inside all the way in and a little bit loose on this outer side. If you turn it so that it's minus 50, you can see that it slides right through. So for this one, for no load, I would call that pretty much right at spec. Okay, now that you get your baseline measurement, you want to add preload. This spring is four inches long, and I want to add four, three quarters of an inch of preload. There's marks on this um, piece that are 0.1 apart. So this goes all the way to one inch, and you use the bottom of this washer will line up at the zero point when there's no load. So you get a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench, put it on the preload nut, and just crank it down until you get to three quarters of an inch. Okay, now that you get three quarters of an inch of preload on the spring, that's going to be your target load. And you're going to want to take all the measurements you just did, the top, the bottom, left and right, fill out your form, and then use that center to center gauge to check that. I'm going to try spec first. Specs too tight, won't fit. This is minus 50 thousandths, that won't fit. And minus 100 thousandths won't fit. So it's over a hundred thousandths too close together right now out of spec. So I would say it's probably an eighth inch out of spec. Okay now that I've taken my zero load measurements and my target load three quarters of an inch preload I did all my math did the top minus bottom fill in this box it's uh, about a sixteenth there. Um, top view I did the math 0 0.024 so this shows you um, the skew that's built into it at zero load um, this is the back view I drew in what that represented as far as the uh, primary clutch um, whatever numbers bigger is what you you know it's a further distance away so you draw that further out put an angle on it put your shaft in mark it with a P for primary um, so then you can see what happens to that view when you put the load on it it totally pulls the P drive up and uh, gets it way out of alignment. You can see the difference between the top measurement and the bottom measurement here is 0.115. So it's way out, almost an eighth of an inch out. Um, in the top view, our target for the top view is minus 30 thousandths. And you can see we're pretty much right where we want to be in that view. Um, but the center to center distance is probably an eighth inch too close. So you can see why this is quite a bit out of alignment. Um, in my instructions I show a big section in there and what what putting shims in different locations does so we can get a kind of an idea on what to do. And I'm going to try that. I'm going to put one shim in the mag side and I'm going to put two shims in the front PTO mount to start and then we'll 
After I shim it, we'll remeasure and see what it does. Okay, now that we've measured the clutch alignment, I want to add a shim to this mag side motor mount. Um, this is a 19, so it has a through bolt. You need a T40 torque spit for the bottom and a 13 millimeter for the top nut. On a 17 and 18, they just have a cap screw that goes down into the mount, so you just need a 13 millimeter wrench. So the first thing you want to do is loosen that, that bolt. Now you don't want to take it right out, just loosen it enough to get a shim in. This is our mag side motor mount shim, 16th inch thick. Um, then you take a pry bar, go under the recoil, between the recoil and chassis, gently pry the motor up till you get a gap in here and slide the shim in. Let it back down and you want to tighten that bolt back up. It'll torque it down, but that's how easy it is. Okay, to uh, get my alignment better with my R minus L number, I wanted to shift this mount forward towards the front of the sled. And to do this, you uh, remove this bolt um, and then slide this stainless steel plate out. It's got two bolts, 10 millimeter here and here. Pull that out, um, drill these holes out. 5 16 drill bit, put the plate back in, uh, loosely install these bolts, put the bolt, big bolt back through, um, and then with a pry bar you can shift this forward um, in those holes. While you have it forward, hold it there and tighten these bolts back up, um, and that will shift that motor forward and help you with your alignment. Okay, I got the shimming done and pretty happy with how it came out. I'll just go over the last few uh, tests I did. This one I had two shims in the mag and three shims in the front PTO. Um, everything looked pretty close but I wanted to get this T minus B closer so the next step I did was I took one of the mag shims out uh, and that's what this shows. These measurements pretty much made my T minus B even. Um, my center to center is still good but my R minus L is not where I want it to be. I want to be negative 30 thousandths all the way up to negative 50 thousandths. So the next thing I did was I pushed the mag side mount forward by drilling out those holes to a slightly larger diameter, 5 sixteenths. Pushed the mount forward and took these measurements. Um, center to center is really good. Uh, R minus L is right up there. Not quite where I want it to be, but I don't think I can get it much closer and the T minus B is good. Um, once you get everything where you want it, T minus B especially, you take the average of these two numbers and that's your offset. Uh, I'm about 0 .110 from where I want to be on the offset. So to fix that, you want to shim the QRS driven clutch out um, with a three millimeter shim that's about 120 thousandths, but it'll put my offset right in the, where you want to be. On the offset, um, the offset is really the two clutches in a line in this direction. And to fix that, if you're off, um, for years people have been selling this QRS shim kit. Uh, we have that on our website as well. This one's from C&T Power Sports. It's three millimeters thick or about 120 thousandths. The large one goes behind the uh, bearing on this end of the shaft and this one goes inside the chain case on the end of the shaft between the shaft and the gear. Shims the whole clutch out three millimeters. Um, I found a few sleds that after doing our alignment don't need an uh, offset change. Everything looks good with no shims. I found some sleds that needed that three millimeter shim and also some sleds that only needed a millimeter and a half or about sixty thousandths. I don't know of anybody that offers a shim for sixty thousandths so we just got this in um, sixty thousandths thick 
so you can fine tune your offset a little bit closer for those sleds that are in between needing shims and not needing shims. Something else you should consider is uh, our polyurethane torque stop. It goes right in this location. This is a, a high stress spot when the motor's under load and torque that is getting compressed really hard. This is the stock torque stop. It's made out of rubber. It's real small, O-ring style. Ours got a lot more surface area and when this gets hot this will compress more than when it's cold and with polyurethane it uh, holds up to the heat a lot better. This this stop is you know an inch from the Y pipe which gets over a thousand degrees plus the clutch gets really hot so I think this uh, polyurethane is a better torque stop. It reduces the movement by about a third so uh, I think it's a good alternative and we have those on our website.